I just want this to stop. I know they're overwhelmed. That part you get, you know, but I want to see them get the guns off the street. These people can get a gun like I buy a bag of potato chips. From time to time, we are having visuals up here. Julia Smoot lives on Pennsylvania Avenue. She says these visuals like this one are happening too often. It's time for a change. They put the guns down. Stop shooting one another. I understand that we have disputes and everything and disagreement. We all don't agree together, but we can reconcile it, you know, by talking. As people bowed their heads in prayer and held their candles close, Smoot says she hopes this will bring light to people's eyes on the innocent lives that continue to be taken. Around 6.30 p.m. on January 28th, Baltimore police were called to an intersection on Pennsylvania Avenue and Lawrence Street in the Upton neighborhood of West Baltimore for reports of multiple shots being fired. Upon arrival, they would find multiple victims suffering from gunshot wounds. Devastated, mortified, and trying very hard not to normalize hearing, hearing that someone's died as a result of senseless violence. We spoke to a community activist who does a lot of work in the Upton community. She says the city's violence needs to be addressed. What we need to do is deal with the hurt, deal with the issues that perpetuate this violence. You know, we need to lock people up. They need to be prosecuted. No normal person wakes up and says, I'm going to shoot into a car with children in it. And, and kill a mom. Like, people that do that don't need to be on the street. Uh, so what are we doing to stop it? The victims were identified as 43-year-old Gerald Folks, who died at the scene, and 23-year-old Maya Morton, who was taken to a local hospital where she passed away a couple days later. Maya's two children, a three-year-old and a one-year-old boy, were taken to a local hospital where they remain in critical condition. After medical treatment, doctors determined that the children did not sustain gunshot wound injuries, but head trauma and lacerations as a result of the vehicle collision that occurred when Maya was shot. A 65-year-old male victim was treated by medical personnel and then released from the hospital. According to Baltimore police, a group of suspects returned fire after two men, including the 43-year-old victim, were shot. During the midst of waiting for a takeout order, Maya and her two children were caught in the line of fire as they waited inside of their vehicle. Both Maya and her children were shot as she attempted to drive off, with her vehicle striking a nearby pole. A few days after her untimely murder, Baltimore police released surveillance footage of who they believe are the suspects. Baltimore City Police Commissioner Michael Harrison said that investigators aren't sure whether the people in the car or the people on the sidewalk were the intended targets. However, he is urging anyone who may have saw what happened to come forward. What point are we going to say, damn it, we got to be better? Both children were injured. The six-year-old from the crash, the two-year-old from a gunshot wound. We're talking about someone dead, a woman shot, a child shot, another child injured, another person shot. Over what? That's every day around here. It's nothing new. Police released these images of the suspects involved in the shooting. All men wearing black coats in one picture, with guns out, taking aim in another. It's definitely a, a, a sad situation. We got to do better out here, but I don't know if it's ever going to change until people want to make a change. They're asking the community to take part in that change by coming forward with information. Both frustration and sympathy flow from this corner as innocent bystanders were caught in the crossfire of Saturday's mass shooting. Absolutely, there's no reason that a child and a woman should be should have been in this situation. Meanwhile, weaving through memorials, neighbors themselves remain prayerful for a resolution. I'm really sorry to everyone that got hurt, and um, I'm praying for all the families that's involved. Maya's sister says she is heartbroken and that the family wants justice. They say although they want to see change in Baltimore, they know that it can't and will not happen until there's community cooperation. Just a few days after her senseless murder, Friends and family gathered together in the Upton neighborhood where she grew up for a vigil and balloon release. I'm Maya's oldest sister. We here on Lawrence and Fremont, and my baby then got killed, and I'm outraged. I want justice, whatever that might be, however that might be. 
Um, I want everybody to remember my little sister as as sweet as she was. Every anybody who know her know that she not into nothing. She just is sweet. She kind. She heartfelt, and I'm heartbroken. Like I want people to know that they broke my family. They broke me, my heart, and the people around her and the people that love her. Her sons is laid up in the hospital in critical condition, and I want justice. And however that is, however I'm gonna get it, my family is gonna get justice. And I want the news. I want Baltimore City to know that, like it's been a lot of killing going on, but this killing was senseless, and this killing hit home for me. And I can't speak on no other one, but like. I really want justice for my little sister, and I'm going to get it. So rest in peace to my little sister, Maya. I love you so much, baby. I'm so sorry this happened to you. I hope my nephews get well. I want everybody to keep my nephews in their prayer because it's like my family dealing with a lot right now. Come out. We on Fremont. If you know my little sister, Maya, the Noah is the lover. We on Fremont and Launch Street. Come out and show her some love. Come out and bring light a candle for show us some respect show us some love and yeah we out here i want people to know that they broke my family they broke me my heart and the people around her and the people that love her shay morton is one of dozens who came to the intersection of laurels and north fremont to remember the life of her sister 23 year old maya morton anybody who know her know that she not into nothing she just is sweet she kind she heartfelt and I'm heartbroken. Around 640 in the evening this past Saturday, Morton and her two young children were waiting for a carryout food order in their car when shots were fired on the same block. Police say that Morton tried to drive away but was shot and her car crashed into a pole. Two days later, she died from her injuries. Her 14-month-old and three-year-old were also hurt in the crash. Her sons is laid up in the hospital in critical condition and I want justice. I can't explain this feeling. This is a hard one right here. Timothy Powell saw Morton that very same day. He says he's known her since she was young and says that she was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Powell was even fighting back tears at the vigil. I was a nice young lady, you know what I mean? Took care of kids, she always had the kids with her. You never saw her without her two kids, you know? She was a nice young lady, went to school, had fun, you know what I mean? Real bright young lady, you know? Nothing you could say anything bad about her. Since the shooting, police have released these surveillance images of the people they want to speak with. Morton wants the community to keep her family in their prayers, and she's hoping the person or people responsible is caught. I really want justice for my little sister, and I'm going to get it. A GoFundMe was created by her family to cover her unexpected funeral expenses. Maya's two sons remain in the hospital as her family and friends still grapple with the reality of everything that has transpired. The case remains ongoing.